If you've ever caught a striper that was so big, you were so happy that you've caught something, and yet he mangles your hooks and got away, go ahead and click that like and subscribe button, guys. This is Connor from Out of Work. Today we're talking about May stripers. It's part of our Fishing Explained 2021 series. Let's get going. Hey guys, welcome back to Outwork Outdoors. My name is Connery. Today we're talking about May Stripers. It is a video series that we're doing. It's part of the Fishing Explained 2021 series. We have a bass series, we have a white bass series, and we have a hybrid striper series, right? So this is the striper series. Uh, we've been doing this for a couple months. It's been pretty popular. A lot of people find it very helpful. So every month we do one of these videos for a specific species, right? We'll tell you what kind of lures we like to use where to find them and what time of day are you going to have your best luck okay so if you haven't subbed to the channel already go ahead and click that like and subscribe button now because we're talking about what's happening right now best choices all types of lures lures you might not even thought about okay and we're not discriminating anybody we talk about bank beaters we talk about the boat guys and you know everything else you know and the kayak guys we're big on kayaks here too so uh, uh for the new guys this is what we do we discover we talk about lures and we talk about all categories of lures uh we talk about where and we talk about when so for the lures this is the first month where top waters take over for our lure choices okay so if you're not fishing tournaments and like that Fishing is really fun for most people. We want to keep that fun factor at the highest priority, right? So we're talking topwaters. If you've never had a topwater bite, you are in store for some... I don't even know how to describe it. You, just have, to, you have to experience it, okay? Because when a big bait swims across the, the surface and a big striper smashes it, it is something that you cannot other freshwater fish maybe except peacock bass in the amazon will not like they just can't top it okay so so top waters let's talk about top waters All right, so with a lot of channels, they don't they don't understand stripers as well as we do, or I guess, I, well, let's not say that. Let's say they don't have a, as wide of experience with stripers as we do, because we fish saltwater stripers and we fish freshwater stripers. So for us in Oklahoma, our stripers are fairly small. A real giant is forty inches long, right? In the saltwater game, a twenty-eight inch is really small. A 40 inch is pretty good. A 50 inch is really, really good. Okay, so so for us, we're going to break it into categories for everybody. So we'll start with the smallest stripers. So some states, my state, there is no minimum for stripers. You can catch five. You can keep five all day. So with those guys, let's break it down by inches, right? So that's way, that way it's more universal for everybody. Because I know we have a lot of freshwater guys and a lot of saltwater guys watching our channel. So... Let's just say stripers that are smaller than 24 inches. Freshwater right now. Start with freshwater. As the baits go, you'll see us transition to saltwater. Same with every other category of baits I'm, uh, I'm about to present, right? So for the freshwater world, less than 18, less than 20, less than 24, this is hard to beat. This is a Yozuri 4-inch Seaguar style. They call this a they call this the sash sashimi topwater. Chrome or white? This one does both. It's got a little bit of chrome. It's got a little bit of white. Okay. So, oh yeah, colors. Colors are going to pretty much uh, keep it like that. Chrome or white. Okay. Top water. This is killer. My favorite one. For white bass, hybrids, and stripers. If, like, once again, if we're targeting stripers that are, you know, smaller than 24 inches. Striper, white bass category. Right there. It's hard to beat. It is hard to beat all right so now you're going to target that 20 inch plus 20 to 30 let's just say 20 to 30 inch range this one's hard to beat 
This one's going to be, once again, it's going to be hard to beat. It's the pencil popper, but it's kind of like a, a small pencil popper. For what the striper guys understand, pencil poppers are pretty big, but this is like a mini version. So you get all the action of a big pencil popper, but in a small package, okay? So this lore is actually pretty expensive. It's from a Japanese company. It's The company is called Evergreen International. This is their shower blows. I don't know why it sounds really funny when I say shower blows, but they've perfected it. The hooks should probably get swapped out because we're chasing strippers. This one's designed for bass, right? But it casts very well. The guys that are throwing the bass gear. A lot of viewers are bass anglers coming over. Uh, this is a good one to throw out. Throw out the Ima. I'm a little stick. You could get that one too. It's basically a watered down version of this one. Pretty good too. The hooks. Hooks just need to be changed out. Alright. If we're chasing stripers, right? And we're talking those two category baits. These are the hooks I recommend. These are the hooks that I recommend. Gamakatsu size 4s and size 2s. Okay? So, take your pick. These are the Gamakatsu's EWG's 2X strong. Yes, sometimes they'll swipe at it, they'll miss. But once they're on it, they're on it, okay? So that's why you got to do it that way. Because these, these hooks that come with them, uh, they will straighten out. And they do. I guarantee you they'll straighten out. Ask me how I know. All right, so that's up to 30 inches. Not saying, uh, you know, 24 inch won't hit one of these, but for the most part, that's every size of bait has its own, like, uh, category does best in if you're targeting fish that are over 30 inches you're starting to talk about the saltwater guys okay so the saltwater guys they can still throw those but they'll catch those schoolies you know, 24 inches or whatever you know some states they might allow you to keep a 24 so if you throw in this for a 24 it might not work okay so you want to step it down to a more finesse pencil popper but when when we say pencil popper in the world of stripers this is where the guys are coming over from the other categories of fishing when we say pencil popper, this is what we're primarily what we're talking about. If you look at this, this is one of the Gibbs pencil popper. It's very, very popular in the, in the uh, striper world. Cape Cod area, New Jersey area, New York area, Maine. It's a staple, okay? It's a staple. And the major thing about this one is it's, uh, it's made out of wood, okay? It's made out of wood. These are starting to go into the wooden lures. So in the bass fishing world, the wooden lure category is almost extinct. In the striper world, it's going strong, okay? So we got pencil popper. Like I said, this is a 7-inch pencil popper. It weighs about 2.5 ounces, so you better throw this on a surf rod. Everything else, you can still throw it on conventional rods. But something like this, you're talking big stripers. You're chucking it real, real far. Hence, you know, it's tail-weighted, basically. And you got to work it very, very aggressively. So for the most part, the whole walking in like this, real slow, that's not what this is designed for. It's designed to cause a commotion on the surface. That's how you catch bass with this guy. So basically, the faster you can wiggle the tip of your rod, the faster you can get bit. Typically, how that's how this works. And once again, these are giant hooks. I think these are already uh, one odd or two odd hooks. Saltwater grade. Freshwater stripers will still bite this. We've caught a lot of them on there. But if you're going to get into throwing some saltwater plugs for freshwater fish, you have to make sure that the fish fish they're chasing the the gizzard shads the big herrings they have to be about this size too and then they will they will eat it all right so just that's the only caveat for throwing some big salt water for freshwater stripers okay this is probably the lord cat i won't say lord category this this lore from phony fish custom made bass lure but we're going to use it on stripers okay the hooks are fairly small let me try to take this hook off as you can see the hooks are fairly small because they're designed for bass but we're going to throw it for stripers all right here we go that's how custom this thing is this is a custom it's a 2009 version 2019 uh version and i got it for I think I paid $65 on one of these. Phony fish. It's phony fish. It's custom made. Wooden lure. These are the lures that are designed to do this. They don't splash. They glide. Like that. 
But the detail on this is pretty dang cool. And, you know, Fish Fanatic, check this out. I mean, look at it. You know? It's just... <laughs> I've never thrown it. It's been on the wall ever since I bought it. It's like I said, it's 2009. I've had it for two years, so... Yep. But this is basically going to target the uh, big stripers that are feeding on gizzard chad this type of this type of time this month and maybe next month throwing it on big points uh maybe humps that come up to about 10 foot off the off the surface but that's top water top water if you guys haven't guessed is a favorite category baits in this channel All right, let's talk swim baits. Swim baits, if you're talking stripers, as soon as you talk stripers, I do want to throw bigger baits. Try to avoid the white bass in my area, but, you know, it's kind of what it is right now. Well, these are the baits that I really like. This is something I like doing right here. Uh, take a jig head, tie a bucktail to it. This is hand-tied by myself, and then put a swim bait on it. So when it's in the water, it looks, it just looks really big. You know, it's the best out of all worlds. Or you can know, just go straight swim bait jig head. I think you guys have seen this in the channel before, but these are, this is a six inch profile after you do this, and this is just a straight up six inch swim bait on the back. So this is pretty cool for the freshwater guys. Um, one ounce heads, big hooks, that's the thing too about stripers, big hooks, big line. Uh, I think this is spotting, sporting an eight aught hook. This is also spotting a 10 aught hook. Uh, the, the, the jig heads are from, I forgot what the jig head name company is, but it's a pretty good jig head. Never had any problems with them. There's that. Uh, don't forget about these guys. These guys we picked up in Cape Cod. Five ounce swim baits. This is primarily uh, Cape Cod go-tos. Eels. They eat a lot of eels down there. Once again, macro. Macro pattern. There you go. Swim baits. Guys throw them at night too and everything. But to me... Uh, if you have a slightly dingy water, they'll work all day. But if, if you have super gin clear water, you have to go in the, in the cover of night. All right. Umbrella rigs. Let's bring out the umbrella rig again. Umbrella rigs are pretty much limited to boats. So you're not throwing this from the bank. You can throw in a, like a castable umbrella rig, but still, if you're targeting big stripers, it'll really mess it up. Uh, for the most part, this is this is a boat affair. Okay, so basically what you want to do, you go, you grab them, you see them, you just throw right back through them. Right? That's what you want. It's probably illegal in most states because you're hanging nine lures. If you hang another umbrella rig and then go, that's even more lures. But as you can see... Something like this. I mean, forget buck, forget about bucktails. You can hang swim baits on all this this whole thing too. So it's up to you. Use your imagination. This is striper candy. You know, for the guys that are they're not very good at, at casting or say you're disabled, you just you just can't do it all day. But you do have a boat. Get you one of these. You know. Last but not least, those are mainly daytime stuff. We're going to talk about nighttime. Nighttime. Oh, wait, hold on. Step back one second. We're not going nighttime yet. We're going to talk spoons. This time of year, spoons. I kind of overshot spoons. Forgot about spoons. Spoons are my favorite way to catch stripers. I mean,. It's, it's like a totally, it's like eating ice cream. Some people like vanilla, some people like strawberry, and some people like chocolate. This is the chocolate category. It's one of those things you don't want all the time. When you want it, you just, you just want it, right? So for spoons, I'm a big Ben Parker fan. Ben Parker and Lake Fork. I think it's called Lake Fork Magic or something like that. I can't remember the brand name of it, but a spoon is what this is it's a flutter spoon actually it's not a jigging spoon it's a flutter spoon this is for when the fish are on the humps and they're on the ground or they're close to the ground it is really hard to pee to beat a spoon especially when they're not active if you've trolled everything at them you've thrown swim baits at them they don't want it you gotta hit them on the head that's what this thing is good for so basically what happens is you you see the fish on your fish finder you're looking down 2d sonar 
or you're uh, or you know they're on the point you're like 20 feet away you cast up to that point and you just hop it hop it hop it hop it and more than likely it's a curiosity bite or or they're so close to this thing this thing falls and hits them in the head and they have to bite them they have to get away get get out of the way you know and there's been many times where i've hit fish with this and i know you've hit fish with it physically hit the fish and that fish darts off while his buddy comes and smashes it so that that is actually a really really cool effect but see how i got this thing rigged up we got a little swivel on top ring ring and then we got a treble and then on the bottom once again we got a swivel ring 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 we do that because there's a chance one might grab the bottom hook and then another one's going to grab the top hook two fish in one cast can't complain but once again what a flutter spoon is is you're supposed to fish this on slack line when you rip it and you you uh basically give it line again this thing just does this this one specifically just kind of does this and it just goes down and that's all they do you know that's all they do uh this is by far my favorite one it's not too heavy it's not too light lots of thump this one's from six cents and what this one does for the other ones known is this one's actually it's got a real wide like kick does this real wide some of the small ones they just do this and as they fall down this one's got a real wide thump and once again like i said you know i, I didn't i didn't have a, a stinger hook up here but stinger hook on the bottom with swivels with swivels is pretty important that one's pretty cool. I've caught many, many fish with that. And if you're in a big school or just like, I'm just tired, I want a big fish. Here, here we go. We got a 7 inch and the 8 inch Ben Parker spoon. 8 inch is giant. And you say, there ain't no fish going to hit this. <laughs> You'd be so wrong. All the gizzard shads in your lake are this size. All the herring that are running around in the northeast, they're bigger than this. Okay, let's just get that out of the way, all right? They will hit this. Undoubtedly, they will. But no one talks about it. So the other thing is, uh, the guys that are uh, fishing the surf, I don't see anybody talking about this guy when I was up there at Cape Cod, okay? Of course, this is more of a prime time deal, but uh, I don't see why they won't hit this. They should hit it. It doesn't cast really good. It kind of this weird like thing that floats out. So casting range is not there. It's really designed for trolling or it's really designed for ripping it off the bottom, things like that. But hey, these guys work. These are my favorites. Favorite time of year is this month into next month. Throw the giant spoons. This is, like I said, it's a bite that is very addictive. <laughs> Let's just say that. All right, so jerk baits, jerk baits. Jerk baits. Let's keep the jerk baits simple. Let's start with the freshwater guys. For stripers, I like to, the jerk baits are a little bit bigger. Um, it, you're gonna be you're gonna be buying the bass jerk baits, but you're gonna be targeting stripers with them. So for me, the standard is the Edo Vision 110 style. You don't have to buy the actual Mega Bass one; just buy the style of it. Or if you want a more higher quality bait, I really like the Dual Realis 120. It is the perfect size for stripers, in my opinion. It's got a big, like, horizontal profile, real thin, just like all the other baits, but it's got a big profile like that. Uh, lots of people, I personally know, have a lot of good success with it. This is just the bone color. I painted a little black dot on there. Help it out, you know. But this is targeting the stripers that are, you know, anywhere between 18 and on a freshwater, for the most part. And you're fishing at night. Throw it out, slow wind it, should be good. Or prime time, ripping it. You know, um, it's pretty good. With the drag bait, at night, I typically throw it, and I just, it's a reel and kill. Reel, kill. It's almost like one full turn stop, one full turn stop. Maybe throw a slow turn in there and just stop and go. So it's really like a reeling act, act action, okay? During the day, those jerk baits, if you do that, you're more than likely not going to get bit. So you have to, you have to jerk them, like, tap, 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 tap. Tap, tap, tap. Because you want the jerkbait to do all these type of things, right? But at night, you just want them to swim. Okay? So that's a big tip for those guys that have never caught stripers at night with a, with a jerkbait. Okay? But we're, if we're talking stripers bigger than 24 inches, we're talking big jerk baits. Some people call them jerkbaits. Some people call them rip baits. But this is one of our uh, 
favorite all time ones. There's this one. Yo's already makes good baits for the stripers. So this is the crystal mineral magnum. There's also the other one I keep on forgetting the name of that we've used in the Cape. Um, pretty good. They're all six inch baits. They come pretty good hardware ready, so you don't have to change anything out. And they cast fairly good. So once again, big surf rod. I would say big surf rod, probably preferably at that nine and a half foot, maybe 10 foot, because you're plugging now, you're not really throwing top waters. Throw it out there, you just reel it. Reel it at night. You know, just a medium reel retrieve, uh, and then put a couple stops in there, and that's it. That's all you gotta do. So once again, chrome and black has always been my favorite. But if you're talking night fishing, uh, a lot of people throw this, but not a lot of people mention this. This is actually my favorite. The jointed, the jointed uh, baits. They have a lot more action, as you can see. They can the, the butt ass end could uh they could articulate, you know, they could bend. So what that does is it does a lot of this, a lot of ass wobbles in the water, a lot more sound, a lot more vibration. So fish like that, okay? Some nights they want that loud vibration. Some nights they, it's hard to beat, you know. So this is once again Magnum Long A 16J from Bomber. My favorite color too. Chrome blue back no chrome green back moss back okay Whew. anyway that's all the lures guys uh drop a question uh if you haven't subbed already be sure to sub subscribe to the channel because that's what we're talking about every month lures the lures are always changing too if you can see our lore cave it's crazy but anyways that's the lures sub the channel if you have it because that's what we're going to be talking about again next month so now we're going on to where when <laughs> places to look for okay where stripers like windblown points this type of year um windblown points there's a shad spawn going on the shad are on the bank they're literally two feet from the bank the stripers are going to be 10 feet from the bank okay so windblown points windblown points with either rocks if it's just like pebble rock not so good but they want round rock right rounder rocks boulders uh trees things like that on a point that's wind blown is excellent in in the night hours and in the early morning hours okay offshore humps this is the first time we've mentioned offshore humps this is, this is primarily for the uh the boat people boat and kayak guys offshore humps use electronics find them and everything's gonna work Top water you were too, but this is fairly a lot of uh, a lot of electronics fishing. You see the fish, you drop the spoon down, then you rip it, you rip it, and they'll bite it. Okay, this is what I like to do. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we get some footage of this, because uh, that's why the big boat was purchased for the most part. For the guys on the bank, look for big flats with drop offs nearby. The drop off is where the fish are gonna stage. So when so put this way. Say that's a drop off, right? Flat, and then that's a drop off, right? The stripers will stage right here. See this? This is the water, the top of the water. They wait until the bait come around and they just ambush. That's what they do. That's their nature. This is the prime time to do something like that. If you can find a flat, it doesn't have to be a big flat or a deep drop. It could just be like three foot drop. Okay, use your Navionics app. And let's not forget about the dams. Everything, it's a party at the dams right now because shad are there, stripers are there, white bass are there, catfish are there. It's literally a dam. Nothing can go forward from there unless you have a fish ladder. But everything's there. The dams are jiving. We just had our third major rainstorm of the year. And like I always say, after the third major rainstorm is when you want to hit the dams. The dams are on fire right now, guys. If, you have, if, you have, if, you, if you're living in a cave dams on fire go there you will catch fish throwing whatever you want but for the most part the lures we've just mentioned those are our, our confidence baits so if you need recommendations right there when when to use each of these lures right so in low light low light meaning we call it prime time if you guys are new to the channel you probably don't know what that means but prime time means prime time is the time where you can faintly see 100 yards, right? You can faintly see 100 yards to to the moment you see the sun. That's prime time, okay? Prime time or low light, swim baits and top waters. Right there. That's when you want to throw them. 
when this sun is up from like say 9 30 10 o'clock all the way to four o'clock that's high sun high sun to me that's an offshore bite the spoon bite the trolling bite that's when that bite gets good because the reason why i say that is that's when the fish are they've already hit the banks for where prime time is at and they've pulled off they've pulled off to where they will just sit the whole rest of the day they'll suspend when they suspend umbrella rig is the money the spoon's the money you're now looking to trigger them into biting they, they don't roam a lot no more so once you find them they kind of sit in the same area that's what i like to do so all right so that's during the day and at night we're talking jerk baits again so once the sun goes down especially specifically true ball stripers as soon as the sun goes down everything typically shuts off this time of year typically everything shuts off maybe except the dams but everything else shuts off you gotta wait until about 10 o'clock 10 o'clock the jerk bait bite comes back the big jerk baits the big stripers i think that's when they come to the bank uh looking for food so big jerk baits most of my biggest bites have come around 9 10 at night um uh, slow rolling a big jerk bait right and like i said it's the first time in this video series we've been, we've introduced night fishing and this is the time to do it they're hungry they've just spawned they're out look at those flats uh big stripers will be on there if you're if you're looking at a migratory route stripers go up river they come back look for the bends in the rivers um something that just kind of breaks the current something that's flat that can house uh bait basically and once again follow the bait bait is everything this time of year it's it's really, really everything this time of year because the strippers are super hungry. They will follow the bait all day. And all right, well, that's the uh, end of the uh, striper series for this month. Uh, hope you guys subscribe. Hope you guys like what we got here. Hope you guys like and stay like all the other subs. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next month. Oh, before you go away, if you're a striper guy, I encourage you to watch our bass fishing stuff. If you're a bass fisherman, I encourage you to look at our striper fishing stuff and vice versa okay because the species are different but for the most part we can use the same gear for the most part we can even use the same type of uh lures but you just have to be in different areas okay so i'll give you a good example uh see so your bass fishing it's not putting out well there's always the striper option whether you go to the, the next lake or heck they're already in that lake you just have to relocate to different locations and the guys that are always fishing on the bank with the bass fishermen, uh, you have to get outside, get outside your comfort zone, you know, so you have to go to the offshore stuff. But that's where the, all the stripers live, okay? And you will find that if you catch a bass out there, the bass that roam with the stripers are definitely bigger than the stripe of the bass that live on the bank. So keep an open mind, sub to the channel. See you guys on the next one.